Greetings, everyone. Thank you for tuning in once again for another episode of Make It Plain Podcast. If this is your first time, you're in the right place because this is a podcast where we dive into not only current events, but events that affect the church. And we have one of those today, but it's for everyone, really, because we're going to talk about Seventh-day Adventism and we're going to talk about a few other things as well. But you're going to see how this relates to you as we, by God's grace today, defend the faith of God. We're told in Jude that we must contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. And that's what we're going to do today. So I want to extend a special welcome to all of you first-time viewers, as well as our regular supporters for Make It Plain. Of course, my name is Jared Ryan. I will be hosting today. And we have our co-hosts, Andrew and Richard as well. So we're going to get right into it. But before we do that, just as a reminder, we are streaming on other platforms, t Twitter, um, formerly called Twitter, now it's called X, as well as Facebook. And you can find the links to our other platforms right here under the description in YouTube, where you can listen to it if you like doing that as well. Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, you know the deal. So today we're talking about something very impactful, something that we could not really pass over because Seventh-day Adventists were called out by name. And we are Seventh-day Adventists. Um, there was a podcast uh, that is done by the Perrys. It's called With the Perrys, Preston Perry, as well as Jackie Hill Perry. And they spoke about Seventh-day Adventists. They were called out by name and they were labeled a cult. So we're going to get into that. But before we do, we want to start off with another trending headline, which has been trending for the past week to week and a half to two weeks surrounding Candace Owens and Christ is King. That's right. Um, so we want to go to the actual screen at this time right now, just to, again, set the stage and transition to our main subject. So again, those of you who are, who are familiar with Candace Owens, she's a political commentary, conservative commentary, outspoken, and she was recently fired from the Daily Wire. The headline reads from the Hill, Candace Owens slammed as being what? Anti-Semitic for tweeting, Christ is King. The Daily Wire beclowns, beclowns itself, and she's right there, you know, stating that Christ is King is trending worldwide. Next slide. And again, she was labeled as what? An anti-Semitic mm -hmm. for basically tweeting that Christ is King. Now we know Candace Owens, she's Catholic by religion. Her husband is Catholic as well. Um, but many people were coming to her aid and coming to her support for two reasons. One, that she stood for free speech. And two, that she stood on what she believed, irregardless of religious affiliation. She stood what she, what she believed. And they're saying this was the reason why she was fired. Notice that in the next headline right here, Daily Wire CEO slams Owens for Christ is King remark. That was, that's Jeremy Boring, Boring, who is the CEO of Daily Wire, right? Look to the next headline. As I said before, many people were coming to her aid. And they, are not chant they were chanting, Christ is king, right? Religious, non-religious. Mm -hmm. Yea, even Muslims. Look at, the mo look, at, look at Andrew Tate as well as Sneeko. These are Muslims, right? And they're very influential um, among young men. And what did they tweet on, on, on X? Yeah, uh, Andrew Tate says, as a Muslim, mm -hmm. it warms my heart to see the resurgence of spirited Christian declarations. Christ is king, mm -hmm. and I pray Christianity regains its strength and protects its societies against the pervasive and constant erosion of morality by the devotees of Satan. If right. you accept everything, you stand for nothing. That's right, exactly. So they were tweeting, Christ is king. Now again, many people are looking at this and say, wait a minute now, these are Muslims. Mm -hmm. And we know that Muslims, they don't believe that Christ, Jesus Christ, was God mm -hmm. incarnate, was God in flesh. They believe that he was a great prophet, a great man. So what, what's the meaning behind Andrew Tate, Sneeko, these Muslims tweeting this, right? Is there is some sort of bandwagoning going on right here? And again, it's not just them, but a, it was a firestorm that blew up on social media. It's still actually, the, the term Christ is King is still trending, actually, right? It's still trending, and people are still chatting about it. But the great question is, are these people simply saying Christ is King, or are they, do they really mean Christ is King, or... Is Christ really king of their lives? Correct. Are they just saying it because it's popular, it's trending? Right. Um, because they're against uh, the Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. They're against Israel. Exactly, right? Pro-Israel, pro pro-Hamas. Mm -hmm. This is the big issue here. Mm -hmm. But we got to dig deeper than just going beneath the surface, than, than, than just surface. Look at the, the last headline here we want to highlight. Remember Kanye West? Yeah. We actually touched on this in our previous podcast. You can go and check that out. He had an album uh, several years ago 
declaring the same thing. Jesus is king. Mm -hmm. But as we talked about in our last podcast, what is Kanye West now saying? I now have issues with this very mm -hmm. same Jesus that I used to call king. I think you... So are people saying this for the sake of saying it or is 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 Jesus really king of their lives? Mm. And that's the great question as it relates to this current current event right now. But this is nothing new because we know everything that happened in the Bible is a repetition of events that happened prior. Everything right? that's going to happen. Everything that's going to happen. Yes, thank you so much. Happened in the past. Happened History in the past. will be repeated. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when you look at um, Matthew, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 9, this happened during the coronation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Remember the people, the multitude, when mm -hmm. Jesus was riding in on the donkey, friends in the chat? What were the people chanting, as it were? Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest, right? Praise be to the Lord. Mm -hmm. In essence, we could say that they were crying, Christ is king. Yeah. They said it, blessed be the king. Ah, yes, blessed be the king, right? Luke chapter 19 as right. well, mm -hmm. verse 37 through 38. Blessed be the king, Christ is king. Mm -hmm. That was Sunday. Yep. Now, what happens? What happened on Friday? The, One week. The same people say, crucify him, crucify him. That's Luke chapter 23, 22 through 23. The same people that were crying, Christ mm -hmm. is king, were the same individuals that were crying, crucify him, crucify him. That's right. And, and not only that, but as you look at Peter, because Peter is, is central to this, this subject, Christ is king. Mm -hmm. um, when Christ was taken by the soldiers and by the priests, and he was brought to trial that night in the high priest the high priest's uh, palace, he was questioned. He was asked, basically, who are you? What do you believe? Tell mm -hmm. us about yourself. Right. And Peter, being in that environment, he did not want the finger to be pointed on him. Mm -hmm. So while uh, they were asking you, are you the son of God? Are you God? And, and the people around Peter were like, weren't you with him? Mm. Weren't you a part of this movement? And Peter mm -hmm. was like, I do not know him. Mm -hmm. So as we're seeing this popular hashtag movement, trend on social media, Christ is King, Christ is King, what God is showing us is that those who profess that mm -hmm. Jesus is King, mm -hmm. soon they are going to be um, highlighted to really find out, do they believe that? Mm -hmm. What do you believe? Will you stand by him when the finger is pointed at you? Because yep. when the finger was pointed at Peter, Peter rejected Christ. Yep. I do not know him. Mm -hmm. And so as God's faithful people in these last days, he is now opening that door to say, look, the finger is being pointed at you. What do you believe? Do you truly believe Christ is king of your life? That's right. What do you believe about him and about the Bible? Mm. That's so very true. You know, that's very true. In Matthew 16, when the poll was taken, who do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. And uh, the people who claimed to be in the church did not know who Christ was. Mm -hmm. They came back. Some say you are Elias. Some say you are Jeremiah. Some say you are just one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? Christ turned to the 12 disciples and Peter uttered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. That word Christ means Messiah. Mm -hmm. And the Son of the living God actually means King. Mm -hmm. So that's what was what Peter said. Thou art Christ, the King. Mercy. Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. The Father is King, mm -hmm. Son of the King. Christ the King. And that was in Matthew 16. Mm -hmm. And in verse 21, Christ began to share with them the coming crisis mm -hmm. from that time forth. Yep. By the time they got that, to that Friday in that judgment hall, Peter denied him. Mm -hmm. After saying Christ is King, mm -hmm. denied him. And uh, we're told in a book called Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 546, that our people have been viewed as being too insignificant to be worthy of notice, but a change has come. Mm, mm. And that change has come. Mm. Because now we are seeing that on social media, slowly but surely, yes. people are pointing at Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah. Calling them you out. have people in different demographic of society. You have politicians. If you remember when Ben, ben, Carson, ben Carson was running for presidency, mm -hmm. uh, the presidency mm -hmm. back in 2016, SDA was on the forefront, yep. all right? And now we have different podcasts now, which we're gonna, we, we'll, be, we'll be addressing. People are actually pointing at us. It's as if God's people now are wearing a bullseye mm -hmm. on their backs. Literally. And we have become the target of these conversations. And many of us who have not yet studied, 
Many of us who don't know what we believe and we aren't prayerful, we're not going to be able to stand up against the finger pointing. Mm -hmm. Peter was willing to draw a sword yeah. Yeah. to go and defend. But when it comes on to doctrinal position, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. affiliation, weren't Correct. you with him, your association, mm -hmm. he did not want to be affiliated. Why? Because he read his own fate mm -hmm. in what was happening to Christ. And some people, many of our people, don't want the castigation. Yep. We want to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And as a result, many of us will not be able to stand when the finger of scorn and scrutiny mm -hmm. is directed to us. Mm -hmm. And that's why we must now study to know what we believe. Mm. That's true. Plain. Very plain. 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 So let's, we'll let's, let's jump right into this right now because as I briefly mentioned at the beginning, uh, you have this podcast called With the Perrys. It is hosted by Preston Perry as well as his wife, Jackie Hill Perry. And especially if you are in that community where you like poetry or even among uh, the black Christian community, these are heavy hitters. They're well known. Uh, she is an author. Uh, she does music. She speaks and teaches all of that. So I'm saying that to say that they hold influence and weight. There's a lot of eyes on their product and what they do. Even a lot of Seventh-day Adventists. Even a lot of Seventh-day Adventists. A lot follow and watch them. And so they had a podcast where they interviewed a, a pastor, a man called Dr. Eric Mason. He wrote a book speaking about cults and, and other things. And we're going to play this first clip to intro it. And basically, as we go throughout this, you're going to see what their position is on SDAs. This first clip, they're going to talk about the word cult. Listen to this. I think you hear people who have come from certain church traditions or certain institutions who will say that was a cult. I know that was a cult, but if you ask, why is it a cult? They might just say, oh, they were overly legalistic, mm -hmm. all the things. And so in your book, you, you do make a distinction between cults and being cultic. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Yeah. So I got like three levels, cult, cultish, uh, te cultic tendencies, mm -hmm. cultish and cult. Now, let's go to cult first, mm -hmm. because that's the easy, that's kind of the easier one to see. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about how you get into a cult, but how, how to get you in. Um, cults, they tend to, they, they tend to fully um, have a disposition that they are the only way to the higher power. I think you hear people who have come from certain church traditions or certain institutions who will say that was a cult. I All right. So watch this here. We heard that clip. For those of you who were uh, paying attention, the couple that was on the couch, that is Preston and, and Jackie Hill Perry. Right. The gentleman with the, the hat on, that is Dr. Mason. So now let's go to the screen. We want to define this word cult because it is thrown around. Many people do not know what it means. Mm -hmm. Textbook definition. It says here, cult, a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. Then it says this. Next definition, a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as, notice, strange or sinister. Mm. So here, this is what they're saying about cult. You follow or veneer one particular person above everyone else, or two, you have some strange doctrines and beliefs. Mm. You know, I, I wished this came across my desk earlier. I believe this was done like two, two or three weeks ago, mm -hmm. somewhere inside there, but I just, I mean, we just received knowledge of it. Because I believe whenever someone is bold enough to call us by name and label Seventh-day Adventist group as a cult, then we have to respond to that. Mm -hmm. We have to respond to that because we have individuals speaking, castigating Seventh-day Adventist, but it's evident that they don't understand Bible 101. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, he said, a cult is anyone who believes that basically his way is, is, the, only, is the, the only way that leads the to the only higher way power. to the higher power. I'm not sure what he meant by higher power. That's correct. <laughs> I don't want to put words in his mouth. So I leave it there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if the meaning is, if you believe that your church is the true church, Mm -hmm. then that is cultic in your cult. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it fear mm -hmm. to make that statement yeah. Yeah. based on what we just heard? Right. Yeah. You know, if we take that to mean a cult, 
Then on its face, Jesus and the disciples were right. also a cult. Very mm-hmm. true. Yep. Let me break that down. When we get to the Bible, every one of us would agree the Jewish church did not accept Christ That's right. mm-hmm. as the Messiah, the mm-hmm. promised Messiah, as being divine, mm-hmm. God in the flesh. They did not accept him. So picture a man walking around who has been rejected by the church leaders of that day. And he stops and he says, John 14, 6, watch yep. this. Mm-hmm. I am the way, mm. the truth, and the life. Mercy. No man cometh. cometh unto the Father but by me. Mm-hmm. What would you have called him? Mm. A, a cult, a cult, a cult, cult leader. leader. Yep. Yep. There's no way around it. Right. Yep. Yep. But was he a cult leader? He no. was not. So in, evident, in evidence, it's clear mm-hmm. that Christ stated that there's only one way, mm-hmm. one way. Mm-hmm. I am that way, the truth and the life. Mm-hmm. You can't come to the Father except you come through me. Mm-hmm. John 14, 6. And the disciples, imagine them now, the disciples, as they went to evangelize, they were pointing to Christ. He is the way, the truth, the, truth, That's right. the life. No man can be saved or come to the Father except through him, except through us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. would you have called the disciples as a group a cult? Mm-hmm. Right. Make sense? Yep. Now, let's take it one step further, dealing with the idea of a cult. I'll leave it there. <laughs> Let that sink in. <laughs> People are like under edge. Okay, what's that one step yeah. further? Correct. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to add that if you consider that principle of, again, that's why, again, it's very, it's very interesting how these individuals throw around, throw around, throw around words so very easily. And just play word semantics with it without understanding exactly what their what the connotation of their phrase of their of their of their words are. Because if you consider the word cult, and most of Christians, most Christians, whether you're evangelical, whether you're Baptist, they believe that Jesus is the way to heaven. Mm-hmm. Right? We can agree on that. We believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven based on the Bible. Right, right. So our, our 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 contention is: Are you following truth? And who is the truth? So if you are following truth and truth only, would you also be declared and labeled as a cult? Consider a person who is of a different religion, such as a Muslim or, you know, or uh, somebody who is uh, Hindu, Hindu or, or what have you. Buddhist. They believe that their gods are the way to salvation. So are you telling me now that every Christian, irregardless of denomination, is also a cult? Because if that's the definition then those Buddhists, those Hindus have the right to call Christians a cult. So how can you label individuals who believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven while at the same time calling them a cult? Go back. Back on. So let's come now to John 10 Mm -hmm. and verse 16. Jesus says, Are the sheep I have which are not of this fold? Mm -hmm. Them also I must bring. Yeah. So does Christ have people in different folds? Yes, yes. Because a fold, Psalm 50 and verse 9, a fold is a house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. First Timothy 3, verse 15, a house is a church. Mm-hmm. So Christ is saying, are the sheep, sheep are people, Psalm 100, mm-hmm. right? Sheep are people. Jesus says now, are the sheep I have, which are not of this Fold, oh, not of this house, mm-hmm. not of this church. Them also. Them also I must bring. Mm-hmm. So they're in other churches. churches. Mm-hmm. Right. Them also I must bring. How will he bring them? They will hear my voice. Mm-hmm. There shall be one fold. Stop. Mm-hmm. One house, mm-hmm. one church. One shepherd. And one shepherd. Yep. Christ said that. Mm-hmm. One church, one shepherd. And his sheep are in other folds, oh, other how oh, Psalm church. 50 verse 9 or the church, 1 Timothy 3 verse 15. Mm-hmm. Stop right there now. Matthew 24 mm-hmm. and verse 14. Mm-hmm. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world 
for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So how is he going to bring the other sheep into this one church? It's through the gospel. Mm -hmm. So which gospel must go to every nation? Matthew 24, 14. Which mm -hmm. gospel is this? Mm -hmm. If we compare scripture with scripture, it's what? The everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. That's it must be everlasting. Mm -hmm. If it goes from the beginning until he comes, it has to be okay. everlasting. So where do we find this everlasting gospel mm -hmm. that must go to every nation? Revelation, Revelation chapter 14, 14 6 that's, 12. It. that's yep. it. The three angels' messages. Mm -hmm. So God's true fold, God's one fold, church. God's one house, God's one church has the three angels' messages mm -hmm. of Revelation chapter 14. Mm -hmm. Verse 6 through verse 12, then verse 14 through verse 16, the second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we won't break down the whole three angels right now. Mm -hmm. All three messages right now, mm -hmm. but it it identifies, it distinguishes mm -hmm. God's true church, That's and right. it's only one. That's right, and, and, and only one. In fact, just too quick to add to that point, a part of the second angel's message is actually a call for God's people who are in the other folds, in the other churches, denominations, other religions, to come out finally right. and to join God's one true fold. Mercy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Isn't it strange? that they are a part of that Babylon system. Mm. And they have the audacity to be calling God's true church a cult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, friends, if, if you're so bold to go on social media publicly and point finger at God's people, mm. then you should not go and hide when we respond. Mm -hmm. Stand up and take your whipping mm -hmm. and your lashing from the word of God. Right. Because you need to have a remedial course to really know what you believe. Mm -hmm. mm. Clear. Word semantics, man. Clear as day. And, and we're going to continue to unpack this. So that was just the first clip where they're defining this term cult. Now let's go to the next clip. And, and they're going to now identify Seventh-day Adventists and class them as well with other religions. Listen mm -hmm. to this. So when we talk about cults, the, fundamentally, like I put it here, you know, a, 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 from a religious perspective, a cult is often seen as a group who acts deceptively. Mm -hmm. So, and so, the, in other words, they act deceptively. What do I mean by that? So they'll have, they won't, they'll use the same terminology that you and I use, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but means something totally different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so notice what he just said. So cults, as he said, will use the same terminology you and I use, but mean something different. Now, when he said you and I, he, he's talking about Christians. Uh, because he believes that, of course, they are Christians. Right. We'll find later on he, who, he exclu who he excludes out of being exactly. Christians. Exactly. Yep. I will just tell you now, they don't, based on their words and how they say it, they don't view SDAs as part of mainstream Christianity. Right. But Maybe. let's continue now. Yep. They, so these groups, cults, they will say one thing that other Christians say, but they'll mean something different. Let's continue. Like, so you know from ministering to Jehovah's Witnesses, right? Yeah. Do you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then we ask him, who is Jesus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he is he the eternal son of God? Yeah. Or is he the archangel Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you ask, you know, you know, Seventh day Adventists, if you ask them the same question. Yeah. Because they they all they cousins of each other. Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and, and Seventh day, and seven -day Adventists. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. like, they all all of their founders were, they were all around at the same time. Mm. Hmm. So you see who he classed Seventh-day Adventists with, yep. Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. Now, as a Seventh-day Adventist, we believe completely different things than Jehovah's Witnesses mm. and Mormons. But what we want to show right now is that the beliefs that Seventh-day Adventists have are based on nothing other than the Word of God. So the question is raised, if you ask a Seventh-day Adventist, who is Jesus? Is he the, uh, the eternal son of God or Michael the archangel? Huh. As a, as a Seventh-day Adventist, Bible-believing Christian, I would respond, we would respond as he is both. Mm -hmm. He is the eternal son of God. He is God himself. Mm -hmm. And he is also Michael the archangel. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they said that we, are, we have the same beliefs as Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, no, we not. No, no we, we didn't. Don't. No, we don't. He, he hasn't done his research. Mm-hmm. 
again, speculation and semantics. Because right? Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that, that Jesus is divine. Is divine he, that he's a part of the Godhead. He was born merely as a human. He was created, created by, by God. God right? What they as believe. a lower God. We don't believe that. Mm-mm. John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. Yes. And the Word was with God. Mm-hmm. Right? We see individuals there. And the Word was God. Yep. Who is that word? Verse 14 tells us that word is Christ because that word became flesh and dwelt among men. So Christ is not only God, but he's equal with God. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at John chapter 8 and verse 58. What does Christ also say here? Again, this destroys this idea that Mm -hmm. we believe the same as Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. right. Who was Jesus Christ? He was God, also the son of God, eternal. John 8 and verse 58 here. Let's Let's give them some scriptures. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Mm. Before Abraham was. Where was Abraham? Way Old back Testament. there in, in, in Genesis, right? So let's go now back to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14. Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. Mm. Exodus chapter 3. Who was Jesus? Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 14. Verse 14, notice what it says here. It says, behold, Exodus 3, verse 14. Yep. Exodus 3, verse 14 says, behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth. No, that's no, not no, no. it. No, it no, says, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in Genesis. Yes. My bad. No, Exodus I'm in. 3, 14. I got read it. That, read that, read that for it us. It says, and God said unto Moses, mm-hmm. I am that I am. Mm-hmm. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So the very, the very same individual in John 8 who said, I am, is the same person in Exodus chapter 3. And who was it? This was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Right? And the, and the, I am. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Get it. We wrap in here together. Let's I, go. Okay, good. Because when you say the word I am, he didn't say I was. I was. Mm-hmm. Or I will be. No, mm-hmm. I am. That means ever present. Ever omnipresent. So the same God in the Old Testament that said I am to the Israelites who delivered them, brought them out of bondage. Mm-hmm is the same God, Jesus Christ himself, in the New Testament who says, I am. And thus, they thought Jesus was a blasphemer Mm -hmm. because they realized what what Jesus was quoting. Mm. He was quoting the same words from Exodus chapter chapter 3, stating that I, Jesus, I am that same God which delivered your forefathers, Mm -hmm. which means I existed before you you all here were even born. Mm -hmm. That's right. (laughs) I am. I, I am is eternal. There that's is no right. beginning. There is no end. That's right. So we see here that Jesus Jehovah. is God. Jehovah. Exactly. That's, that's it. Thank you, Andrew. So Jesus is God. Now, does Jesus also have the same nature as the Father? Yes, he Are does. they one? Absolutely. Look at these scriptures. John chapter 5, verse 18. Mm-hmm. John 10, verse 30. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. Jesus himself also was the creator of the world and the universes. Right. He created the angels. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. John 1 and verse 3. Hebrews 1 and verse 2 and verse 10. And the angels worship Jesus. They mm-hmm. worship God. Mm. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6. Mm. And, and as you said that, you said the angels worship God. That's right. They worship Jesus. Mm-hmm. When you look at Matthew chapter 4 and analyze the temptations of Satan towards Jesus, Mm-hmm. He said, look, just bow down and worship me. I'll give you all of this world. And and Jesus responded, get thee behind me, Satan, Mm -hmm. because thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Serve. That's right. Yeah. So he was saying, look, I'm not going to bow down to you because you being an an angel, fallen angel, you're to bow down to me. That's right. Being God. Mm Mm-hmm. Powerful. So Jesus is God. Seventh-day Adventists believe that 100%. Yeah. 100%. He is God. God. The brother didn't do his research. No, no, not at all. And then the second part of that was Michael the Archangel. You want to jump in there? Roll. All right. So so Michael the Archangel. Now, there are a few scriptures that mention the word Michael. When you look at Jude, let's start here. Uh Jude 9. There's only one chapter in Jude. But it says, Yet Michael the Archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Christ. There's not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Uh-huh. Before you go there. Yes. Let's lay a foundation before you go there. Okay. Because I believe after you go through these scriptures, some people are still going to look for hooks okay. to hang their doubts upon. Let's uh-huh. make it plain. Because we need to let the people know the formula by which we arrive mm. at Bible truth. Right. So mm. they understand why we are doing what we are doing. 
because people believe they can read one verse and give their own opinion on the verse. Mm -hmm. And the people in the pew, in the church, accept that because the man speaking has uh, degrees, etc. But what does the Bible say is the method by which we attain Bible, Bible interpretation. First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians two, verse thirteen. That's right. It says what? Spiritual, spiritual things must be compared with, with spiritual things. things. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is how man's way of interpretation is one way. God's way is another way, and mm -hmm. God's way is the Holy Spirit's way is comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians two thirteen. Mm -hmm. Matthew eighteen sixteen. That's right. Comparing scripture with scripture. Text with text. Isaiah 28, Isaiah. verse, verse 9 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. Comparing scripture with scripture. That's right. That's how we arrive at Bible truth. Mm -hmm. So now when we speak about Michael, we have to apply the same method, the same formula. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We have to go. And then we can scripture. argue with the actual results mm -hmm. because it is the formula by mm -hmm. which Christ says we must use to interpret scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Teach. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, that's what they need. Teaching. That's right. So before I even go to Jude, let, let me go to Revelation first. Because, of course, you can always do this in, in various methods. But Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, we see that the war, which broke out with in heaven, and it says in verse number 7, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. So in here, we see Michael... And his angels are fighting against Satan. And we know what happened. Satan was cast out. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to Jude, it says Michael, the archangel or the archangel. The, that word archangel means chief of the angels. Mm -hmm. Chief of the angels. But notice what's going on in Jude 9. They are disputing over the body of Moses. Now, we know based on scripture that Moses was resurrected and he went to heaven. How do we know that? Because when Jesus was on the earth and he went to the Mount of Transfiguration, one of the individuals that came down to see him was Moses. Moses. Yep. So right here in Jude 9, they were disputing about the resurrection of Moses and who only has power to raise the dead, to contend with the devil for this person. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And mm -hmm. think about this as you're going there. If Michael was a literal angel like Gabriel, mm -hmm and has power to resurrect. Mm -hmm. If you have power to resurrect the dead, that means life mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. resides yep. in you Innately. naturally. Natural. Correct. Yeah, that's right. No literal angel can resurrect the dead because you can't give life. Mm -hmm. Resurrection is to restore life. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. Michael V. Ark could not be an angel like Gabriel. No. Because mm -hmm. Gabriel cannot give life. That's right. right. No. And that word Michael simply means the one like, like God. God. That's, That's what it right. means. That's right. Jude, Michael means the one like God. That's Archangel, right. the chief of the angels, meaning the ruler, the head of the angels. That's right. It's Jesus. And to your point, who is the one that has life innately? John 14, as you quoted earlier, verse 3, it says, In him was life. Was life and that life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. Mm -hmm. So coming back here now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Notice whose voice. Verse 4, verse 5 of John 1. Okay, so yeah, notice yes, who's... Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so notice whose uh, voice raises mm -hmm, the dead. First mm -hmm. Thessalonians 4, Read that. verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself, mm -hmm. who's coming down? The Lord. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the Ark. archangel, mm -hmm. and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm -hmm. So it is the voice of the archangel... The voice of God, the voice of the Lord, which raises the dead. And that's none other, none other than Jesus Christ. That's right. Also notice that in Scripture, you don't see archangels. You never see that. Mm -mm. It's archangel. There's only one in Scripture. Right. Right. The Bible mentions Michael, who is Jesus. That's and right. of course, Daniel 12 and verse 1, Michael is also mentioned as well, that he would stand up and there would be a time of trouble. trouble. That's right. Who is the only uh, individual that has the power to, to stand or to do something, and it affects the entire world to now create a time of trouble, a time of distress, a time of disaster. That's Christ. Can angels? No. No. Mm -mm. Can, can No. Christ is our mediator. He's the only one who can stand for us. That's right. Right? And you can, of course, you can look at Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13 as well mm -hmm. with the Daniel and that dream. And Gabriel was in that dream as well, if we remember. Right? right? A, a regular angel. A regular angel. <laughs> regular angel. 
And it, Gabriel says that Satan withstood me 20 and one days. Mercy. But lo, Michael, mm. the prince, came to help me. Mm. So is Gabriel there and then Gabriel's coming to help himself? This is confusion. No, no, no. Right? This, again, going back to interpretation of Bible doctrine, Andrew. Comparing scripture with scripture, it would make no sense for Gabriel to be there fighting Satan and then Gabriel calls on Gabriel. No, this is Jesus Christ, Daniel chapter 12 and mm -hmm. verse number one. All right. And so basically, Gabriel in that moment could not overpower Satan. No. Who did? Michael. Right. Michael being Christ, the one who is God, the one who is over and has more power than Satan himself. Because exactly. of course... Jesus, Michael, is the creator. So the point is clear. That's right. At Seventh-day Adventists, we do believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God. Mm -hmm. He is the I Am, always was, always will be. Mm -hmm. And of course, he still is Michael, the archangel in the scripture. That's it. Let's move on to the next clip because there's more. I mean, there's so many tentacles, tentacles to yeah. this little octopus here, this big octopus. So the next clip, we're going to hear their response to what uh, Dr. Mason suggested and, and Jackie Perry now, who has had conversations and is familiar with Seventh-day Adventist, she's going to speak. I don't want to move on yet. Okay. Replay that clip, the last one. Okay. Notice not here, friends. Mm -hmm. Like, so you know from ministering to Jehovah's Witnesses, right? Yeah. Do you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then we ask him, who is Jesus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, he, is he the eternal son of God? Yeah. Or is he the Archangel Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you ask, you know, you know, Seventh Day Adventists, if you ask them the same question, watch yeah. this. Because they they all they cousins of each other. Cousins. Mormons, mm -hmm. Jehovah Witnesses, and, and Seventh Day, and Seventh -day Adventists. Yeah, yeah. They're like, they all, all of their founders were, they were all around at the same time. Okay. Listen to the fallacious reasoning. <laughs> They're all cousins. Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Seventh Day Adventists are cousins because all of their founders were around at the same time. So because we were around at the same time, that make us family? Mm. <laughs> in a literal sense, literal sense now, because we associate in the same community, does that make us family? It does not. Ridiculous. No. Number two, in a spiritual sense, because we are in the same area and vicinity, does that make us spiritual family? No. So what make us literal family members? Well, DNA, blood genes, bone. blood type, all of that. Yep. Lineage, mm -hmm. my father, your mother, cousins, mm -hmm. uncles, That's aunts, right. That's right. a family tree. Okay, what would make us cousins in a spiritual sense? Doctrine. Mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists have nothing in common with Mormons. Mm -hmm. Nothing in common with Jehovah's Witnesses. No. We are not cousins. We're not brothers. We're not sisters. Mm -hmm. Case closed. That's it. And it's like this person here, he's making things up that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to sit back and have him no. lambast God's true church and say nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. If you say we're cousins, prove, prove, prove it. it. Prove it. Pro prove the doctrines which mm -hmm. we share in common. Mormons. Mercy. Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Because watch this. The first thing in any religion is who you worship. That's right. Mormons do not worship the true God of heaven mm -mm. and they reject Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. That's right. Jehovah's Witness, likewise. So what do we have in common and that's what to be calling us cousins? That's, that's right. what he's getting wrong. And, and he's, he's saying we don't uh, believe Jesus. We don't worship Jesus just like they don't. But that, but again, that's a misrepresentation of who we Correct. are. Correct. Misrepresentation. So imagine if, he, if, we were in, if we were in the court of the land I would expect the defense attorney to say, Your Honor, jurors on this jury, this witness has no credibility. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. With all due respect, he has no idea what he's talking about. No idea. No let's idea. Roll. All right, let's look at this next clip. I yeah. can hear SDA people right now like, no, he did not. <laughs> oh, Just my God. You know, you, you, know, you, you know, as soon as you said that, I said, oof. Because we have a lot of people who come from the SEA church, and every time we talk about the Seventh Day Adventists, we like they look, they're almost like confused about mm -hmm. like why are you even talking about our church? And maybe that's something that you know we probably should do some videos about that later. But yeah, like a lot of people don't even know the difference between you know Listen, Orthodox the, Christianity and the SEA. Yeah, if you hmm. so he said that many people don't realize or don't know the difference between. 
traditional orthodoxy, orthodox Christians, and also Seventh-day Adventists, right? And so based on that, because we don't know the difference, that means Seventh-day Adventists, they're cults, and we have the truth. Let's break that down there. Let's, let's, do, let's, let's do some comparison here, comparing orthodoxy, orthodox Christianity with Seventh-day Adventism, and see which one lines up more with Bible truth, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what we want to get to. Let's, we did some research. Three points here. Mm -hmm. Authority, tradition, as well as Bible compilation. Based on those three points, let's see now in comparison who is closer to Bible truth, okay? On on the point of authority, Orthodox Christians, notice friends, Orthodox Christians view the Bible and holy tradition. What two things? Bible, holy, holy. tradition as a single authority. While we as SDAs, as true Protestants, consider scripture to be the only supreme authority. Can we agree on that? Yep. Yes, sir. We put Bible above tradition. We don't put tradition above the same level as Bible authority, as Bible truth. When you consider Christ in Matthew chapter 7, verse 29, the Bible says, for he taught them as one having authority, mm -hmm. not as one having tradition, one having authority. And if you connect Matthew 7, verse 9 with John 1 and verse 1, which says that Jesus was the word and the word was with God, word was God. So that word is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And so our main authority is the Word of God. Correct. Clear? Correct. All right. And of course, you can look at John chapter 17, verse 17 as well. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word, that's Jesus, mm -hmm. is the truth. Okay? Now let's look at tradition. Tradition now. Follow me, friends. Orthodox Christians believe that the church tradition comes from the apostles of Jesus Christ and is a reliable guide to interpreting Scripture. So they believe that church tradition, we don't know what church traditions they relate to, that they're referring to here. It could be anything. But we as SDAs believe that scripture alone is the normative only standard for the church. Hmm. Can we agree on that? Yes, yeah. sir. Bible above the, the uh, tradition. tradition again, church. right? 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Reproof, correction, what else? Instruction. In, in righteousness. all righteousness. So that's on tradition. What about Bible compilation now? The 66 books of the Bible, Orthodox Christians, accept other compilations, other collections of books not found in the Bible. Mm. What are those? Have you heard of the Apocrypha? Mm. The book of Enoch? Books. The book of Enoch, the forgotten books, mm -hmm. Maccabees, Maccabees, Ecclesiasticus, mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the other latter books that they say they are also inspired. Mm -hmm. We as Christians, Bible-believing Christians, Seventh-day Adventists, believe that the 66 books of the Bible that God gave are complete and that God preserved them through the ages and, are, and is enough for our salvation. Amen. 66 books of the Bible. Teach. Right? Finish? I'm finished. You yeah. know, let me jump inside here. So the point of contention here is that Seventh-day Adventists as a group is a cult because we are not a part of Orthodox Christianity. Why would we want to be a part of Orthodox Christianity? Mm -hmm. Let's start right here, which we'll get to later on. Orthodox Christianity, which would include Baptist, Pentecostals, name them. Presbyterians, Methodists, Lutheran, Lutherans, Church of God, all of them. Okay. All, all the charismatic, Nazarene, all of them. Kojic, mm -hmm. uh, Ap Apostolic, Pentecostal, uh, you name it. Orthodox you Christianity. It. <laughs> Let's stop right here. Number one. Uh -huh. Number one. What about Sunday worship? Jesus. Sunday worship, because remember, it's all about worship. Mm -hmm. Nights them. Worship is the issue in the great controversy right. between Christ and Satan. Mm -hmm. That's why Satan said to Christ, all these things will I give unto you if you, bow you, bow down. Down. you fall down and worship me. Worship, worship me? Mm. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get out of here. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Him only shalt thou serve. So the issue here is worship. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. And Orthodox Christianity believe in Sunday worship, mm -hmm. which is not in the Bible mm -hmm. from Genesis to Revelation mm -hmm. as being condoned, yes. commended by God. It's in the Bible, mm -hmm. but it's condemned. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 8, etc., 2 yes. Kings 23, etc. Mm -hmm. All right? So why would we want to be a part of orthodox Christianity? Mm -hmm. Number two, do orthodox Christians, quote unquote, do they believe that the dead is conscious <laughs> or the dead is mm. unconscious? They believe it's, it's, con it's conscious. They, they believe the dead is conscious. 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 Yep. You can bury a loved one, but the spirit is up there. Yep somewhere in heaven and even talking to you Roman and Roman. can revisit you, etc. That is not biblical. So why would you call Seventh-day Adventists a cult? Because they believe in Bible truth. Mm -hmm. It's the one that stands out. That's why. To my point now? Mm -hmm. yeah. What about hell's fire? Mm -hmm. yeah. Eternally burning hell. Correct. Yep. Yep. Very, again, very similar to even papal doctrine. Correct. Oh, yeah. Correct. I don't want to be a part of that. Exactly. But, but they're saying if you are not a part of orthodox Christianity, then you are the cult mm -hmm. when it's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> See my point now? Right. I mean, so we cover three. Yeah. How much, how much more should we cover? Oh, what gone. about the secret rapture? What about the millennium? Mm. Yep. Hmm? What the about pre-rapture pre before the, the, um, the, tribulation. the tribulation and all those? Yep. Does the Bible speak about dress reform or no? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. And many, the majority, 99.99% .99 of those in Orthodox Christianity, do not accept Bible reforms on dress. Mm -hmm. What about health? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. See my point? Out, what out, about health? Out the door. Rise, kill, and eat. That, that's their... That's right. A little bit of wine goes yeah. for the stomach. That's ortho, quote, unquote, Orthodox mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. And that's papacy too. Yeah. Very much so. Again, you see, you see the difference between putting tradition mm -hmm. as the interpretation of Bible scripture. Right. And not comping scripture with, with scripture. scripture to arrive at Bible yeah. truth. Yeah. And so because Seventh-day Adventists do not agree with the mainstream Christianity Correct. on those points. Correct. Essentially, they're saying we're not Christian. And here is the nail now in their coffin. What about the heavenly sanctuary? Mm -hmm. Orthodox Christianity, quote unquote, that group does not accept Christ's ministration Second. in the heavenly sanctuary since his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Mm -hmm. They all believe that, that the cross. atonement was finished, completed at, at the, the cross, cross. Yep. and there's no other ministration. That's right. That is completely false, mm -hmm. erroneous. Yep. If you go back to the Old Testament, there was an atonement. There was an atonement mm -hmm. done at the altar mm -hmm. in the courtyard, yep. which typifies and points to the cross. Mm -hmm. The high priest moves into the holy place, yeah. mm -hmm. then in the most holy place to continue the second step second of phase. the atonement. It's a two-step process mm -hmm. that completes the atonement. Yes, the work of Christ was finished at the cross. That's why he said it is finished. Mm -hmm. But Revelation 6, not but, in addition, and chapter 16 of Revelation and verse 17 says, it is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two-step process. Two phases in his ministry. In the atonement. Yeah. Yeah. They don't believe in that. See my point now? Yeah. And this was, I won't go into this now, but this was one of the issues that arose in 1955 mm. and 1957. Who knows? No. Mm. I'm not going there right now. Right, right, mm. right. Yeah. yeah. So if, if be, let me summarize this point right here. Mm. If believing Bible truth causes people to label us, us as a cult, I will gladly wear the title for Jesus. Oh, yeah. right. Because he wore it for us already. That's correct. That's the key. They called him Beelzebub. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. one, who has, who, one who has a devil. Even John the Baptist. Chief devil. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. And that brings us right back to that judgment hall scene correct. with Peter. That's right. Because the Bring finger was pointed. And when Peter saw Speak what on. was happening to Jesus. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew 26 that he went... Uh, there to see what would be Jesus's end. Mm -hmm. And when he saw what was going to be and what was the ending of Jesus, the finger pointing, the persecution, the exclusion from the rest, mm -hmm. he said, no, I don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And so we have to examine ourselves, especially if you're a Seventh-day Adventist and you profess to believe these things. Are you agree or in agreement with the members on this podcast, with the Perrys, mm -hmm. that Seventh-day Adventism is a cult? It's not based on the word of God. It's not a Christian religion, mm -hmm. all these things? Or do you believe what the Word of God says and will you stand for it? That's right. Let's continue here. Now he gets to uh, the big hitter as he attacks Ellen White. If you get in the book and you look at the prophecies of Ellen G. White, 
Mm-hmm. You look at LNG White and their prophet and the apostle and how they had she plagiarized most of her doctrine. Mm. Fake prophecy said Jesus came back in the 1800s. Mm. Okay, pause right there. So he he's still speaking, but hope you didn't miss that. So he says, you get in the book and you read about Ellen White and how she plagiarized most of her doctrine and how she spoke false prophecies and said, Jesus is coming back in the 1800s. And then we, we cut the clip. We'll continue shortly. So is this... Start right there. Which one? I mean, we're... 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 we're yeah. We're, okay, okay. We're... You know, these men, and he's not, he's not the only one guilty of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They erect, create a straw man mm-hmm. and want us to believe that straw man. Mm-hmm. He says, Ellen White in her books wrote that Christ came back in the 1800s. In the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Where is that statement? I've that Christ it. came back in the 1800s. Yeah. I'm telling you. How is it you're calling Seventh-day Adventists a cult? Mm. Mm-hmm. That means a cult doesn't believe in Christ, mm-hmm. doesn't believe in truth. Mm-hmm. It does not believe in the commandments. That's right. The ninth commandment says, thou, thou shalt, shalt not bear, bear false, false witness. Mm-hmm. That's right. You are bearing false witness. You're mm-hmm. being disingenuous. You're telling a lie, yeah, a yeah. bold-faced lie. Mm-hmm. We're in Sister White writings. Does she say Christ came back in the 1800s? If that is not there, you are lying. Mm. (laughs) And what does that make you? A liar. A liar. Mm. And that means you are not a credible source. Mm -hmm. And yet you wrote a book. What's in the book then? Mm. That's a great question. Lies. What is in the book? (laughs) You see, I I believe again. Go ahead. And he's calling us a cult. Mm -hmm. Right. Cult. When and then he says cults are deceptive. Mm. What is deception? A lie. A lie. Yeah. Yeah. So who is really the cult? Mm. And the cult member? Mm. A lot of hyperbole, hyperbole being thrown around. He's misrepresenting the great disappointment, I believe, in eighteen forty in eighteen forty four, where the Millerites thought that Jesus was coming back to the earth and they had a misrepresentation. You're being too nice, Richard. Because <laughs> he didn't say that. He did he did not say that. <laughs> and that's not how we work in the courts. Lord have mercy. We don't say, Well, uh, a witness, we think you mean Listen to me. You the only person mm. who helps out a witness understand mm. is the attorney mm. who is in line and on the same team with that witness. Mm-hmm. I would not expect my defense attorney to be helping out a witness who is mm. testifying mm-hmm. against me. Right. That's right. Yep. So please do not help him out. <laughs> but he needs some serious help, <laughs> spiritually and mentally. But I mean, I want I want to go here because again, his his qualm. Again, this yes. total total misrepresentation representation of not only Adventism as a whole, our doctrines, but also who our prophet is. Yeah. Right? Let's go here. I want to go here, history, before we go to uh, Bible. But in 1981, the Seventh-day Adventist Church hired an attorney by the name of Vincent L. Ramick. Mm-hmm. He's a senior partner of Diller, Ramick, and Wright, White LT Limited. He's a specialist in patent trademark and caught you have it right there yes, you have sir. it right you got to put it up into the camera caught he's a he's a he was a specialist in patent trademark and copyright cases in washington dc now again this is not this is an attorney not of our faith correct outside this is somebody source. outside source out of the world because we don't want we don't want to be biased here exactly right and he did an extensive research on ellen white her writings her manuscripts her documents to see if if this claim was true that if she was a, a plagiarist and if there was any copyright infringement. Mm. What, did, what findings did you have here, Andrew? I mean, just state it. I mean, we can um, post yeah. this as a link afterwards. I got, I got some here. He, 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 we, have the, we have that link posted in the YouTube right now. On the other platforms, we'll post it afterwards. Sure. Right? Mm. So he spent more than 300 hours mm. yeah. and researched over 1,000 relevant cases in American legal history. And he has a 27-piece right there. It's in the, it's in the description. Published in the current issue of Advent Review. Mm -hmm. What was his findings? Yeah, well, one of the things he found was that less than 2% of all of her literary work uh, comes from, no, less than 2% it comes from other sources. In other words... Less than 2%. Exactly. So the majority of it is her own work, what the Lord inspired her to write, and, you know, what she deduced from her study and her research. Less than 2%. You know, when you put that in context, how many books... 
Right. Did Ellen White write? Right. I mean, books now, not not counting manuscripts. Right. And letters, books. She, I believe she is the most published author. Yeah. Of female liter- author. Female yeah. author. Yeah. Of literate of 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 in American of, history. Published yes. author in American Period. history. Yes. Right. Yes. So and, it's extensive. And, and it's extensive. in the woman's category, she's number one. Number one. Yes. Yes. Extensive. In the woman's category, right. Right. number one. Yeah. Right. And uh, he found that she, her works, stayed within the legal bounds of fair use. Because when you're writing, you can pull from other sources. There's a legal bound and a legal limit. Also, it says here that the quotations, the excerpts that she took from other sources, she uniquely made them her own and used them to amplify and forcefully paint a picture of her own uh, words and what she was trying to convey. Under God's inspiration, of course. Exactly. So it's like if you're writing a, a research paper, you have your findings, you have your train of thought. And you may take some sources to further amplify the point that you already have found and you have concluded. Mm -hmm. Then also, it says here that many times uh, she actually urged her readers to get some of the copies of the books or excerpts of material that she was quoting from. So she was not trying to take someone else's material, cover it up and say, oh, this is mine, and then resell it to you. Mm -hmm. She was not a plagiarist. That's right. And, And so, of course... And if we were to throw out Sister White's writings just on that merit, then we have to throw out all of Paul's writings. Mm -hmm. Because in Acts 17, Acts 17 and verse 28, Paul writes, For in him, that's Christ, Mm -hmm. we live and move and have our being, Mm -hmm. as certain also of your own poets Mm. have said. And Paul quotes the poets for we are also his offspring. That's right. So Paul is quoting from the poets During in time. Athens. Outside sources. Do you yeah. know who th- these people were? The philosophers. Mm. He's quoting from them. Epicureans. Mm. Mars Hill. Mm. Mm-hmm. Secular poet. He's quoting from them. Mm-hmm. Was Paul not inspired? Do we throw out Paul's writings on that, on I, that merit? I guess he's plagiarizing there as well, Andrew. Hmm. And so, of course, friends, as in conclusion to this point here, after yeah. his extensive research, he concluded he concluded that based upon the review of the facts and legal, legal precedents, Ellen White was not yes. a plagiarist. S- and her the, works the people did the not constu- constitute copyright infringement and or pri- pi- piracy. Good. Say one more time for the people in the back. I kind of interrupted you there. All right. All right. Let me so based on his, his, his research and his conclusion, mm-hmm. he concluded that based upon the full re- review of all the facts and the research and legal pre- precedents, Ellen White was not a plagiarist. Her works did not constitute copyright infringement nor piracy. Mm. It's done. That, that, that's, le- that's legal facts right. on record. It's published. Correct. It's not hidden in a vault somewhere. Right. right? These are legal facts mm-hmm. that are on record right now. And you can go do your mm-hmm. research. Right? And, and right? an expert in that field is the exactly. one who did the research. Right? Exactly. That attorney, that, 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 um, what is it? Gentleman. Yeah. But his, 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 um, his, his, his actual company, um, it, it, it they specialize in legal trademark on copyright in cases. Patent, but it's not just, a, exactly. it's not just some random right. individual or right. attorney right here. From Washington, D.C. D.C. Specialist. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And in that clip, again, as we're about to move on, but he mentions numerous false prophecies. Well, we would like to ask you, Mr. Mason, Dr. Mason, what false prophecies has Sister White said? Where? That are false. Where they, I mean, where? He, he doesn't list them. Where they you see, and that's the point we're driving home. If we are in the court of the land and the prosecutor brings a witness on the stand and the witness said that the accused, right, had false prophecies, do you know what I would expect my defense attorney to do in cross-examination? Pinpoint them. Yep, show them. Pinpoint them. Yep. Because if, if, if the defense attorney mm-hmm. does not do that, then the jurors mm-hmm. may say, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the facts? That's right. Yeah. Where are the facts? And I'm thinking, if you claim to be a Christian and you want to, quote, unquote, protest against another church, what must you present? The facts. Facts. Mm. Right. Case closed. That's not, right. Now, if not, yes. you're a liar. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, that happens in the court. They, they actually are supposed to share 
Mercy. The accusations or whatever, all on file with the defendant or with the Correct. accuser, right? And that's we so have that cross examination. Yeah. Exactly. And Based on these mm. facts here, this is what you said. Okay, boom. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. We're digressing. No, 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 no. I just want to amplify the point because, you know, some people might be wondering why is Andrew talking that way? But what you're saying is based on the word. Because Matthew 26, do you know that very same scene is happening where there is a, a bringing of quote unquote facts uh, for it. this evidence? And yet they were found to be liars. Notice this right here. It says that when Jesus is before Caiaphas, <laughs> it says, Now the chief yeah. priests and right, elders and all the council we saw sought him. false witness yeah. against Jesus to put him to death, mm. but found none. Mm. So they were trying to bring false witnesses, false accusations to say, Oh, look, he's a cult, cult leader. That's right. That's Jesus. Mm -hmm. But notice what it continues saying, though. So they found none, no false witnesses. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. Here it says, at the last came two false witnesses. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't find any false witnesses. And then finally, they did find some two false witnesses. And what did they do? They twisted, the maligned Jesus' words. Mm -hmm. It says here in verse 61, and said, this fellow said, they're quoting his writing, his words mm -hmm. now. This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But now, did Jesus say that? Mm -hmm. He did, yes. but that wasn't the context. That's okay. a, is a wrong misinterpretation. I just want to scream on this podcast mis right mis now. But, but you whispered. Misinterpret <laughs> no, because, you know, I don't want to blast your ears over there listening. But it says, he said that, but they misinterpreted his words because yeah, which they, temple they was Jesus it. talking about his when body, he said his this, body temple? His body temple. They and skewed. there was no one to cross examine those witnesses. That's mercy. Right. So no. when the question was asked now, whom shall I release unto you? Christ or Barabbas? The people were sold now. Mm -hmm. The Jewers were sold now. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want Barabbas crucified Jesus. Mm. And many people will listen to Correct. this podcast Correct. because they are popular and Correct. say, oh, I, I didn't the know. The majority. I don't know much about Seventh-day Adventists. That's what they believe? Mm. Oh, cool. I, I, I'm staying far from them. Exactly. Correct. There's no Without doing their research. Correct. Yeah. And, and it really is deceptive. I just, I, you know, just got to bring this out. It really is deceptive because deception is really a lie mixed with the truth. And so you have other false religions, we're not afraid to say it, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, false religions mixed with a true religion. Yeah. So it, now you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Bath water. That's right. And we can say what that doing? any religion becomes a false religion when it's not based on the Bible and based on the Bible truth, a thus say the Lord. Mm. Right? So if, if, if we get labeled, as you said earlier, Andrew, with the title of cult because we believe sola scriptura, Bible only, Right of what God's word says, then we can glad we we will gladly take that title. Christ and, took it, and the issue they brought out wasn't the people mm -hmm. within the denomination. No, their class in the whole denomination, the whole, the whole denomination. So not, that's why we're not getting into. Are we saying every Seven Day Adventist is faithful and will be saved? Yeah, that's that wasn't the, the point. question. Exactly, that's not the question. Only answer that which you are asked That's right. in the court of law. Mm -hmm. Make sense what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with it as a whole. That's right. A mm -hmm. movement. That's right. Let's, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Look at this next clip. You start, then you ask them, who is Jesus? Like they believe that since we worship on Sunday, that we, yeah. that's the mark of the beast. Yeah. You know? Very short sound bite. So according to his words, let's play it one more time. Listen again carefully. Listen again. You start, then you ask them, who is Jesus? Like, they believe that since we worship on Sunday, that we, yeah. that's the mark of the beast. Yeah. You know? Boom. He, be he said that they believe that since we worship on Sunday, that's the mark of the beast. Now, again, a misconstruing of what Seventh-day Adventists believe. Do we believe that individuals who presently go to church on Sunday, like, that's the mark of the beast? They have no, the mark of the beast? No, no sir. No. no, we don't. No, no. We don't believe that because based on the Bible, and we've covered this in... I believe our last podcast, yeah. as well as Go another one. Go check that out. Yeah. Where we did with Todd Friel. Yeah. And he's talking about the mark of the beast. We, we went through that ad nauseum. We're not going to repeat all of that. But from the Bible, the mark of the beast is connected to worship. Mm -hmm. It is a, a, a system that forces people to worship falsely. falsely. Mm -hmm. And again, when you're addressing and identifying what is the mark of the beast, you have to ask that question. Who is the beast? Mm -hmm. Because... You must know the beast first to know 
his mark. That's right. It's mark. That's right. That beast is from Revelation 13, 1 through 10. Mm -hmm. It is none other than the papacy. That's right. We showed again what a beast represented in Daniel chapter 7, 17, 23. It's a a nation, nation, right? So this nation we confirmed, look at our last podcast, Mm -hmm. was none other than the papacy. And her mark, her... Her, 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 her sign of authority. Is, of authority is Sunday worship. That's right. Right? And the mark of the beast is Sunday when it's enforced by I the Lamb with the papacy leading out exactly. in this false day of worship. Again, we you, can't... You know, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy that both of you are willing to give the Bible study on the mark of the beast. That's not my stone to grind. Mm. He said that they, seven Adventists say, that... Anybody who worships on Sunday has the mark of the beast. I'm going to respond and ask him, where in our writings do we say that? Where do we say everybody who worships on Sunday has, has the mark of the beast? Right, Where's we, that? Because we believe in the Bible. We don't, we, 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 none of us teach that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We teach that the mark of the beast is a particular event mm-hmm. in the near future. Mm-hmm. When Sunday becomes the law of the land, we are forced to worship on Sunday under persecution Mm -hmm. if we don't that's what we teach we don't teach somebody right now that worship on sunday has the mark of the beast so that means he is uh, calling us a cult when he needs to go do a remedial course Mm -hmm. on who we are Uh, because he's simply stating things as if they're facts but they are erroneous, yeah. misleading. And, and I'm fearful of what exactly written in that book. If he's talking like this, God knows what's in that book. If the research, if this is what he's regurgitating from his research. Show Lord, me sh- I mean, where, where we say that. Show it to me. Because then when he proves, well, you as a movement teach this, then we can defend it. That's right. How can we be defending that which doesn't exist? And we don't, we don't if promote. If the question was, what's the mark of the beast? Mm-hmm. Then we give a Bible study. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. But again, at the at the end of it, because of what we believe from the word of God surrounding the mark of the beast, for those who do not want to conform to God's word, they're still not going to accept it. Why? Because as as you were uh, talking about earlier, the difference between uh, Orthodox Christians and, and, and Adventist. Seventh-day Adventists, right. it is a popular Christian t- tradition, as they will say, that has been for over 2,000 years that the church keeps... Sunday. That's what they'll tell you. Key, key, the key word there is popular tradition. Popular tradition, not Bible truth. Yeah. And so because the mark of the beast from the word of God is connected to Sunday worship, because the majority don't want to give up Sunday worship and be converted on that point, you're a cult. Yeah. You're not Christian. Yep. Let's continue. The next clip, he again goes back to Sister White and... Uh, tries to misclassify how we view her writings. No, so it's just like, 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 but Ellen G. White in her writings tells them, do not like go in and act like, use their term. It's, it's literally, we got it in the book. It's like literally, this is her saying this. It's not us making it up. Yeah, yeah. And so to, to go back to your question, Jackie, that's what's so deceptive about cults. Like if when, because they view her writings equal, if not greater than the word of God. Yeah. You know, and so, that's the, but, but cults are always like that. They they act deceptively. So he's saying cults act deceptively. Mm-hmm. He said, Ellen White, we believe and we state in our writings that Ellen White's writings mm-hmm. are either equal mm-hmm. to God or e- above. Equal, if not greater than the word of God. Where, Again. Where is the <laughs> where is the proof of that? Where is it? Where is it? At? Where is the proof? Present the facts and let me address the facts if it's there. Mm -hmm. Where do we teach that Ellen White's writings is even what? Above the word of God? Yeah, equal if not greater than the word of God. Show me where we have ever stated that. You see, the issue right here, the issue really is you are addressing the fact that you don't understand what the Bible teaches about God's true church having a leading inspired messenger in the last days. Mm -hmm. That is Revelation 12 and verse 17. God's remnant people, they keep the commandments of God and they have the testimony Testimony. of Jesus Christ. That testimony of of Christ is the spirit of prophecy, chapter 19 and verse 10 of Revelation, which means 
if you look at chapter 1 of Revelation, mm -hmm. John had the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. John had the testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Paul had it in 1 Corinthians. It's all there. Mm -hmm. So God's true church will have a true leading inspired messenger, if you want to call it prophet or prophetess. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. They don't believe that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to educate them. To understand God's true church in the last days, you must understand the true church in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because chapter 12 and verse 17 mentions a remnant, mm -hmm. the remnant. To know the remnant, you have to study the original. Mm -hmm. And from Genesis throughout the Old Testament, God's Hebrew movement had a leading prophet. Always mm -hmm. had a leading prophet. Always, Richard, had a leading prophet, That's period. Right. Mm -hmm. So the remnant must also have a what? A leading prophet. Mm -hmm. A leading prophet. And there would be no need for Christ to say in Matthew 24, beware of false prophets, mm -hmm. if there were no true prophet That's right. Matthew, in the last days. Matthew 7, 15 as well. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. there, there'd be no need, mm -hmm. right? So now as Seventh-day Adventists, we accept the ministry. We accept the writings of Ellen White as the spirit of prophecy, mm -hmm. the testimony of Jesus, Christ communicating to the church and the world through an inspired human messenger, just as he did in Bible times. Mm -hmm. Did Christ work through Miriam? Absolutely, did yes. Christ work through uh, Deborah, Deborah, Deborah yes. and the other prophetess? Mm -hmm. As the Bible calls them prophetess. Right. In the New Testament, Philip's daughters, mm -hmm. seven daughters who prophesied. prophesied yes. Right? So we accept her writings. Mm -hmm. Your challenge is now to come and disprove it. That's right. It's not we to prove. Mm -hmm. It's you to try and disprove. That's mm -hmm. right, because we know what we believe Correct. from the Word of so God. So now, how do we prove her writings were inspired? Mm -hmm. How do we prove anything? How do we test anything? We have to, we have to, we have to use the, the biblical formula of arriving at Bible truth right. and test her writings from the Scriptures. Correct. In chapter 8 of Isaiah, chapter, chapter 8, verse 20, the Bible says, To the law and to the testimony. Did she bear a testimony? If they speak not according to which word? Her own words? That word, the word of God. If they speak not according or in harmony with, there is no light in them. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 through verse 21. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 through 3. A true prophet speaks in harmony with God's word. And lead you to true worship. True worship. Amen. Deuteronomy 13, yeah. verse 1 through verse 3, with Matthew 24, 24, and verse 25. That's it. And Numbers 12 and verse 6 also mm -hmm. mentions that they will receive visions, they will receive dreams from the Lord. That's how he will speak to them. That's right. So now, that is a small synopsis of the true church having a true leading inspired messenger. Now, there'll be other people in the church who receive some measure of inspiration right. from God. Mm -hmm. But remember, while in the Old Testament, the original church, mm -hmm. while some people had a measure of God's spirit, the there was always it. a leading prophet, right. a leading messenger. Right. Just as we accept that to be in the writings and ministry of Ellen White, That's right. period. Mm -hmm. Now, to his accusation that we put her writings above even greater than scripture, let me tell you something. That shows ignorance because all the prophets in the Bible were inspired by the Holy Spirit, all right. leading prophets. Right. Which one of them ever said, I am greater than the previous? Not one. I am greater than my contemporary. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, they were all contemporaries. That's right. All contemporaries. Mm -hmm. Did Daniel say I was greater than, than Ezekiel? Ezekiel or Jeremiah? Did, did he ever say, I have a greater measure of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. no. 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 So that means, since they're all inspired by the Holy Spirit, they're all on the same what? The Play, same level. level how? Field. The same level of inspiration. That's mm -hmm. right. And they're all subject one to another. That's what right. is that scripture? That's 1 First Corinthians 14. 14, right? Mm -hmm. Read that yeah. for us. And Read verse it. 32. It says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Mm. So that means if there is a person such as Ellen White, whom we believe based on the Bible is a true prophet, her writings, her ministry must be subject to the other prophets. It must be tested. It must be proved, be in harmony with 
the other writings of the Bible. Yeah, that's right. It's the same spirit that inspired Ellen White as the same spirit that inspired Paul, that inspired uh, Moses. Correct. So her writings cannot contradict what Moses said, Correct. should not contradict what Jeremiah said, what Correct. Paul said. Why? Because these are other prophets and her spirit of prophecy, her gift of prophecy must be subject to theirs as well. That's and right. that word subject also means to be humble. humble. Subject. Do mm -hmm. you not think when you look at the contemporary prophets, mm -hmm. right, like, like uh, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Daniel, yep. do mm -hmm. you think Daniel said, I was greater than Ezekiel? You can't he find would it. more so say, Ezekiel is greater. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, that was also which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Treat another better, better. than yourself. That's right. So yeah. now when Sister White may write lesser than, mm -hmm. you see the context. That's right. The That's context. Right. Right. Not seeing your inspiration mm -hmm. as greater than the other, but even seeing yourself lesser than. That's right. But mm -hmm. in God's sight, not man's observation, mm -hmm. in God's observation is the same level of inspiration. That's yes. right. That's now, right. now let's even use the words of, of Jesus on that same point about a one prophet thinking that they're better than the other. They never did. But notice what Jesus said about John. It says in John 11 and verse 11, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. But notice his last words. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So, yeah. So yeah. Jesus says, look, John the Baptist is the greatest prophet that's ever known Correct. to mankind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you make it into the kingdom of heaven, if you are the least in the kingdom of heaven, you are still greater than him. Mm -hmm. So God is not putting one above the other. He's leveling the playing field. You want to yeah. hear this now? Yes. Jesus said, I and my father are oh, one. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's in one scripture. Mm -hmm. Then Christ comes back and he says, John 10, my father <laughs> is greater than I. I. Case closed. Move yes. on. <laughs> I mean, just sip on that. Just sip on that. For let a second. that sink in for a minute there. Yeah. Sip on that. I and my father are one. Mm -hmm. Then later on, he says, my father is greater than I. Than Mercy. I. All right. Move mm -hmm. on. Amen. All right. Let's, let's, let's look at the next one he here. To, he really has to contend with her. I mean, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> it's nothing different than when David went up against Goliath because Goliath was remonstrating against the Hebrew mm -hmm. nation. Yeah. And David had to say, who is, is this, this uncircumcised Philistine, Philistine yeah. Yeah. trying to, defy, to protest and mm. defile God and defy the, the Lord. people of God? Right, right. And God is looking for men today, even among this movement. That will be what? Stand for the right when champions are, are few, few right. to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few, That's right. to draw warmth from the coldness of others. Courage from their, from their cowardice, cowardice. Loyalty, loyalty from their, from their treason. So woe to these professed SDAs who sit in their churches mm -hmm. and they're not studying. Mm -hmm. How are they going to stand? She says Bible that, studies, what now? In the, the last phrase of that, um, that quotation said, this will be our test. Mercy. Mm. And they're not studying. Being tested now. If you're not, uh, these guys are bold. Correct. They're bold with error. They're bold with error. Correct. And if we don't know what we believe, how are we going to stand for the faith of Jesus? Jude, contend for the, for faith. the faith once delivered right. unto the saints. And praise God for the SDAs who have been uh, studying. Studying. Studying, studying and also publicly remonstrating against this video. Right. That's now, right. now look at uh, this next clip as he confuses himself. I would put, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would put S SDA as a full court, court like I would like, a Jehovah's so, Witness? Um, I, I, I would say, uh, listen, I would say they were called, they're called, have they called, I'll say cultic between cultic tendencies because they don't fully isolate you away like those cults that say, we're going to all live in the commune together, you yeah. know, like the Waco like Jones. Jones. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, 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 that's to cult. me, that's, I, don't, I wouldn't put them, I would be more gracious yeah. to yeah. them, even though I do believe they're cult. You know what? <laughs> May I please? Go ahead. May go, I? go ahead. Imagine he's on the stand and he's with the prosecutors that group, and he stands, sits on the stand, and he states, well, mm -hmm. um, Andrew Enriquez uh, is a cult. Then later on, I don't believe he's a cult. Yeah. I'll be gracious to him. He's cultish, but I still believe he's a cult, though. Yeah. Huh? 
my defense attorney will stand up and say, okay. Your Honor, jurors of this prestige jury, what more do we need to hear? Yes. If this is a star witness mm. actually telling you he doesn't believe mm -hmm. in one breath he's a cult, in another breath he's not, mm. he's confused. Mm. Yeah. So this witness is not credible. No, no. And if your star witness can be picked apart, confusing himself, the case falls. You know what, Andrew? I would say this. Throw out, throw out the case. Mm. Throw Come it on, out. Man. Throw out. Throw out the case. Confused. Yeah. Throw out the case. So they're not a cult, but even though I believe they're a cult. Yeah. That doesn't make he, any sense. He literally, he literally undermined his whole argument mm -hmm. from when he began the podcast. He undermined his whole argument. Mm -hmm. I don't believe they're a cult, but they have cultish tendencies. Right? No, he said, I believe they're a cult, but I won't classify them as a full cult because of, you know, they won't exclude everybody. Mm -hmm. So they have cultish tendencies, you know, so th but they're still a cult. But, but what he's doing is I mean, subtly casting black balls at Seventh-day Adventists so that those who listen to his presentation will be like, okay, something fishy is about them. I don't want to know the truth or learn from them at all. No, but, but you I'm, know, I pray that this video right here hits those algorithms, that it will get into the same networks, that those of you who are unfamiliar with what the Bible teaches, what Seventh-day Adventism teaches based on the Word of God, that there, there you, be, th you will reach this video there through should, the algorithm. There should be more presentations like this right here. Mm -hmm. there, should, there, there, should be, there should be thousands where there is only one mm. voice being heard right or now. Or a few. Correct. Because again, he's not just talking for, to, to one Adventist. He's classifying everybody. Yeah, correct. And if you go to that, if you look at that video, how many Adventists are commenting in the comment section, mm -hmm. right? There, there should be more voices on this very same subject mm -hmm. and to educate the brother, you to know, educate him because he's clearly ignorant of what correct. we as Adventists believe. Correct. If he would talk to a true Adventist, I don't know who, who he's been talking to. Correct. He must have been talking to some backsliding Adventist or somebody who was prior Adventist. Correct. But if he had talked to somebody who, who, who has their Bible in hand, and knows what the Word of God says, this maybe would have been a different podcast. And maybe he would have had a different interpretation of right. what he now believed. Yeah. And, what, and also the heart, too. Because you can hear a whole presentation on truth. That's as true. Jesus was standing before Pilate um, and, and is seeing, you know, that this man is innocent. He is the truth. Even his wife coming and telling him, have nothing to do with this man. Yeah. And yet, because the hardness of your heart, mm -hmm. you... Uh, walk away before hearing what is the truth, mm -hmm. and you reject the truth, even though it's right in front of you and, and present it. So, or, or thou almost persuadest me exactly that a you're not a cult. A group saying, Andrew, uh, I'm done. I mean, that, that that that's it for that clip. We'll play one more, I believe. We we have two more clips, but notice now as they talk about cults and how cults seem to only evangelize the other Christian churches, the other Christian denominations. Yeah. Why do you think a lot of cults target prof professing Christians? How much time we got, man? And can, you, can you draw that out? Because I don't have context for even the question you're asking. Maybe he can draw it out. Yeah, the reason why is <laughs> most cults, if you look at Hebrew Israelites, look at Jehovah's Witnesses, mm -hmm. you look at Seventh-day Adventists, which in their doctrine says they want to, ev their job is to evangelize Protestantism. Stop right there. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> in in Seventh Day Adventist writings, oh, boy, boy. they write that their job, their, his words, their job is to evangelize Protestantism. Protestants. What's going to be my response? Where in our writings do you find that? Present the evidence. We're in court. Present the evidence, or of else you are lying. Of your claim. Come on. Uncircumcised Philistine, you are lying. Mm. So let's take a look at this. If he really understood his Bible, this would not be an identifying mark of a cult. Think about it. Because Jesus, come right back to Christ. Yep. When Christ came as a man, uh -huh. Uh -huh. who did Christ evangelize? And who did Christ tell his, his followers to evangelize? It's right then, Acts well, chapter 1, verse 8. Just right. a synopsis verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says it. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and, and in Judea where else? and in Samaria and, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, I Jesus, won't. from what background, ethnic background, religious background was he? He was a Jew. Correct. Yep. So, but Jesus says, okay, disciples, start right here in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Who primarily resided there? Jews. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. Judea, Jews, Samaritans, mix of Jews and, and, and other nations, and then to the uttermost part of the world. So the truth that they received from Christ was to start within the so-called God's people of that day mm-hmm. and to go to the whole world. And, right. and let's, let's paint the picture because the Jewish synagogues mm-hmm. had rejected Christ. Mm-hmm. Right. They cast him out mm-hmm. in Luke chapter 4, yep. rejected John the Baptist. And the disciples and anyone who did accept Christ and John were also rejected. Mm -hmm. So they were like the churches now who are calling us a cult. Mm -hmm. And what did Christ say in Matthew 10? Mm -hmm. He says to the 12 disciples, go you not. Mm -mm. Not to the house. Don't go anywhere else. But I send you to the lost sheep Sheep of of the the house house of of Israel. Israel. Lost sheep. So was Christ a cult leader? Mercy. That's where he sent them. By that definition, he is. But by the Bible's definition, no, he was not. And even Paul, notice this, what, what he said under their ministry when they were working in Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. It says, If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. That's so right. So Paul preached the gospel along with the others, disciples, apostles, to every creature at, in the world at that time. And that include everybody. everybody. In Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, yes. they were preaching to both Jew and Gentile. And Gentile. That's it's right. there. Mm-hmm. Christ sent the 70 disciples in Luke 10, not to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but to go elsewhere. Jew and Gentile. Did Christ preach to the Jews? Yes. Mm-hmm. Did he preach? Okay. Did he preach to, to a public? Who was Matthew? A publican. Who was Zacchaeus? A publican. All right. Well. Did Christ speak to the people of Samaria? Yes, he, he did. did. Yeah. The, the well. woman, the Syrophoenician Inside woman. Inside and well. outside. Every single race, every single ethnic group, religious group. Mm-hmm. That's the gospel message. That's right. Let's come to the everlasting gospel. Revelation 14. Chapter 14, verse 8 of mm-hmm. Revelation. This and chapter gospel. 18 and verse 4. Come out of her. My Wait a minute now. Mm-hmm. But he just said, one sign of a cult is to preach to your own people. Well, to, to be um, evangelizing the Christians, basically. Yeah. Proselyte, yeah. Proselyting. But the yeah. everlasting gospel says to go to those in Babylon. That's right. Everyone. Yeah. And Christ says those in Babylon are his people. Mm-hmm. Come out of her, my, my people. That's right. Chapter 18 and verse 2 and verse 4 of Revelation. My people my over people. there. Now I'm going to put this in here. I, they I, don't know their Bibles, man. That's true. No, they don't. So I mean, that's why we have to make it plain, Jared. And I don't, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. Don't but, do it. No, no. But we know that there is a movement among mainstream Christianity, uh, ecumenism which is a uniting of all the denominations and even uh, sometimes other religions as well to be under one. That's true. And so I don't know what he believes on that point, but those who do support ecumenism don't support evangelism Correct. in this sense because they don't want you to go to other denominations, mm-hmm. other religions, other uh, sects, and try to win them over, quote unquote, to mm-hmm. what you believe. Yeah. The Pope calls it right. no proselytism. Right. Correct. Right. It's popery. Yeah. Correct. That's what Do it is. not proselytize mm-hmm. Christians. That's right. Just try go and reach the unchurched. Exactly. That's right. Just put aside your distinctive doctrine. Correct. To come together All you under, ecumenism. under one banner. Right. And that is a cult. That is. Right. <laughs> because if it's, not, if it's not biblical, it's cult. It's mm-hmm. cult. Yeah. Period. There's no gray area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's and so right. the devil has his deceptions on, on either side. That's right. You know, and again, we don't know what he believes, but that is another false move in there, that's the ecumenical one. movement. That's right. And of course... Those in the chat, you can also write down Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, of Holy Ghost. Jesus, again, Jesus' method is the method to follow. Mm. And so if, if they're saying that this method is cultish, whose method are we to follow then? Their own? Lord have mercy. Acts chapter 28 and verse 31, Paul in the New Testament as well, as well following Christ's method of evangelism. That's right. Acts chapter 13, the Thir- gospel must first be preached unto the, you Jews, but seeing that you put it far from thee, mm-hmm. lo, we turn to the Gentile. Gentiles. That's it. Mercy. That's it. That's Bible. Was Paul a cult leader? I mean, they did call him so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And That's- so we're just going to play this. It's really a few seconds, last clip of them ending off this conversation, and then we'll give closing comments. Why do you think a lot of cults target prof- professing Christians? You know what's interesting here? 
want to get that um, straightened out. In the Bible, Ezekiel, does the Bible say only warn the wicked? Mm -mm. No. He says, warn the righteous mm -hmm. that he sins not. not. Why do yeah. you yeah. So the call of evangelism should be twofold. Mm -hmm. why do you, you see, that spirit that says, uh, why do you think Christians, no, no, why do you think SDAs evangelize other Christians? Mm -hmm. That means they have a lukewarm attitude. Mm -hmm. yep. So we are already okay. So we yep. can relax. We, we, we can relax. We are okay. Mm -hmm. That is chapter 3 of Revelation, verse, verse, verse 16 through verse, through verse 18. Mm -hmm. They have already arrived. They are in need of nothing. Of nothing. That's, That's right. It. That's it. And really, that last clip was just him finishing that, and they finished off just by asking, why do they try to evangelize Protestantism? But that's besides the point, friends. Well, based on what we just heard, yeah. they need evangelism. <laughs> they yeah. need Bible study. That's yeah. right. Yep. Based on what we just heard, mm -hmm. they're in great need. That's right. Make it plain. That's, That's right. It. That's yeah. right. And so we just want to encourage all of you to get back to the word of God. You know, get back. there's so many deceptions out there that the devil would is trying to deceive us, but we have to get back to the Bible, the Bible alone. And when you are certain that God has given you truth, ask him not to be afraid to stand up for it because there's always going to be uh, the backlash. There's always going to be opposition. But God says, stand firm. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. But if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my father. Matthew 10, uh, verse 30 to verse 34. So with that being said, we're going to close off the podcast. Thank you so much. Please let us know in the comments. And we pray that you would stand faithful and not be like Peter, but stand firm and say, God, help me. My spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. God bless. We'll see you on our next podcast and make it plain and don't forget to like and share this video i have more to say now. so can disseminate i have more to say i'm landing you're the plane gonna, you're gonna have to keep I, you, you gotta I have you, more to no, say we gotta keep you on babe and we gotta keep you on I next have more episode to say. go ahead go ahead go ahead close <laughs> off so we'll, we'll see you next time again follow us and and listen on google Podcasts, apple Podcasts, spotify god bless you see you next time